Okay, in this video, I wanna show how I put corners together at the 90 degree intersections. So what I mean by that is when these corners come together, there's gonna be a gap right there. So I'm gonna show you what I do to fix that, how I cover that. Okay, so first thing that I'll do is get the, get the corner bead on. So I'll, I'll put the verticals up first, right flush up with the top. And then I'll take the top piece and I'll put it in. And I've already roughly measured it. So now to get my final cut, I go like that and then I can just finish it off like that. Okay, so now that will fit pretty close like that. Okay, so here's the issue. I got these gaps here. Uh, one thing some people can do is just push mud into it. That, that can work but there is the risk that that can crack later. So the other thing people have done, and I used to do this too, is I would miter them like that, the ends. So when they fit together, they are more or less fairly close. There's two problems with that, is one, in the real world, it's not easy to do all your cuts like that, especially if you have dozens of these intersections to do in a house and you have limited time. The other thing is that if it wants to crack, if the corner really is subjected to um, to structural forces of a shifting house, it will crack. It'll just crack down that center line. So, although it looks nice, it looks professional, really it doesn't solve a whole lot to miter them like that. So, let me show you what I do. Okay, first, I'll just wipe the excess mud off the corner beads. Next, I'll take some mud and I'll, I'll push it in to that hole. And I'll do several pushes to make sure that it's in there all the way. So it, it could be left that way and Maybe it'll be fine, maybe it won't. But if you really want to guarantee that it'll never show a crack, and it'll just be a hairline crack, but it can still be visible later, and it can show up weeks, months, maybe years later. So if you don't want that to happen, here's the next step that I do. Okay, so I take a scrap piece of corner bead, my excess trim, the trimmings, and I peel it off like that. So you're probably wondering, why do I use the paper off of corner bead and why don't I use drywall tape? The reason is this paper that comes off that way is very, very thin. It's much thinner than drywall tape. So I want, I want the thinness because it's going to be easier to hide that after when I coat over it. And this side, that greenish side, that's the thinnest side. So that's going to be the side 
that's going to go over there. So if you don't use um, this paper faced corner bead, then you can use regular drywall tape to do this, but it's less ideal because the regular drywall tape is, is thicker. So you're going to have to put more mud compound over the corner to hide that slight buildup of regular paper tape. Okay, so I'll show you what I do to put it on. Just put some mud like that. And on that side. And I'll just take a piece. I'll cut this in half actually. Put one there. And then one there. Then just take my fingers, I hold it there, and then I pass the knife that way. And then take my fingers and I hold it here. And then I go that way. The reason why I hold it is so that it doesn't shift as I'm wiping it. And then, and then I can do my final little adjustment to get it right over there. So the thinness of that paper, you might wonder, well, if it's that thin, how well will it hold up against cracking? thing is, is that these junctions, they don't really get a whole lot of structural force because there is no joint here. Uh, it's just going to be subjected to just minor movements, mostly maybe from people just hitting into the wall or just bumping the corner bead um, and also just uh, structural movement of the whole house. but. They don't really get a lot of serious shifting or movement or forces. It's just enough forces that they could crack a drywall compound, but it certainly won't crack any sort of paper, no matter how thin put over top. So I'll just quickly do this one. There, so that's what I do. All right, that's it. So if you found that helpful, consider hitting that subscribe button so that you get notifications whenever I upload a video.